You guys, I watch too much TV, so I figured in this video we would do a tier list ranking every single show that I've watched. Maybe there's a couple that I didn't put on this list because I couldn't think of them off the top of my head, but overall, this is a no-nonsense list of every TV show I've ever seen, so let's jump right in. All right, so we have a good one to start out this list. We have The White Lotus. The White Lotus is easily going in my A tier. Everything about this storyline is just so good. The fact that it's individual stories between each season set in different parts of the world, and there's like some continuity between both seasons with characters like Tanya, who pl who's played by Jennifer Coolidge, and things like that, I think this really makes makes a compelling story that could go on really forever. It's a mix of drama, it's a mix of funny, it's a mix of romance, it's just the perfect blend of everything told in a really fun, creative way. The editing, the cinematography is really good, and the music is amazing. I'm stuck singing, or like going like, like all the time now, and I'm sorry you had to hear that. I'm very sorry, but whatever. Yeah, so I think The White Lotus sits in a perfect A tier. I can't wait for season three. I heard Belinda's coming back in season three, and I like that because there's a little bit of crossover season to season. I hope they do that throughout the whole rest of the run of the show. But yeah, up next is Lost. Lost really paved the way for everything that we see on TV nowadays. It really was like The Walking Dead before The Walking Dead was the thing. It was the first cable show that wasn't like some premium network such as HBO or Showtime that brought an episodic epic to the forefront. Lost was great in the beginning seasons, but it really diminished in quality, and because of that, it's going in C tier. Now again, I have to commend Lost for being one of those shows that really started everything off. It really gave inspiration for so much out there, and there's so much to look back to with so much appreciation for this show, but as far as everything we're going to get to on this list, I think it fits well in C-tier. C-tier is that meh, middle ground, nothing super crazy, you know, that's, that's where it fits. But up next, we have Boardwalk Empire. Boardwalk Empire is set... Not really far from where I'm at right now. I'm only a couple towns over from Atlantic City. And it really is amazing to learn a little bit of history, even though a lot of it is fictitious. But it is based off some real life events of a guy named Enoch Johnson who ran um, Atlantic City. I was, I was going to say a different town, but he ran Atlantic City back during the bootlegging era. So, you know, a little bit before the Great Depression and all of that stuff. He ran... Atlantic City in that time, and there was a lot of corruption, and this show is all about that. I think it was really well done. The last season was a little janky, but most shows struggle with the last season, so I'll give it a little bit of slack because it wasn't terrible. I think this show perfectly fits in B tier. It's not incredible, but it's not bad in any way. It was a very entertaining show. Some of the villains in this show were just so good. Some of the characters like Chalky White, Nucky himself, Eli, there was just, there were so many compelling characters that really made such a compelling story, and even though, again, it took stretch from the truth, it was just fun, and it was intertwined with real-life events that had occurred, and it was awesome to see. This show was made by the same people, for the most part, who made The Sopranos. This is what they did, like, right after The Sopranos, and I think they did a really good job. The set pieces were outstanding. I just loved this show. It really sunk in with me personally, and though it's not going to be in like an S tier or anything like that, I do think it is a really strong show. I really do. But you know what another really strong show is from HBO? It's Game of Thrones. And Game of Thrones could have been an easy S tier if it wasn't for season seven and eight and a little bit of season six. I think it's going to go in A tier because it still is one of my favorite shows of all time. It's just season seven and eight really, really ruined it. And if it was told in the way George R. R. Martin wanted this show to be told, I think this could have been easily S tier and probably the best show on this list. But it's unfortunately not, so we're going to have to live with that. Um, we got what we got. You can't get too upset with that. And what we got for the most part was really good. Just season seven and eight are keeping it from that S tier. Everything else qualifies for S tier. Like, 
everything. The cinematography is fantastic. The acting is fantastic in this show. The writing, while George R. R. Martin had stuff and material, it was fantastic. And then Dumb and Dumber ruined it. But everything on paper up until the last two seasons was just so good. And then they dropped the ball. But, you know... You win some, you lose some. This is still going to go down as the worst fail of all time. But for the most part, the show was good. And I have to commend it for that. It, it was a good show for the most part. But you know what was a show that was extremely hyped like Game of Thrones, but wasn't so good. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't good. That's Squid Game. Squid Game is another perfect C tier for me. It doesn't, it's not bad. Like, it's definitely not bad. And maybe I'm a little biased because I don't speak Korean. But this show was a little hard to follow because the translation was terrible. If you were watching the English dub, it was so funny. The emotions just did not add up. So it resorted to you watching it in Korean, which is fine. It's not the end of the world because the story was just really good. But it, I, I, w I wish I got to follow it a little bit more. I, I'm not a big fan of watching shows in other languages. I know that I, I'm not trying to come across rude or anything like that. That's not at all what I'm trying to be. It was just a little hard to follow because it's, you know, not a show meant for English people, essentially. <laughs> um, but the dub was weird. Uh, the Korean subtitle one was a lot better because the emotion in the Korean subtitle one was so good, but the acting was incredible by the actors in this. The colorful sets were really good in this show. The idea on paper was good, but the plot twist at the end was pretty much just goofy. It wasn't, it wasn't anything special in that regard, so I can't say it's like a quality, quality show. The hype was there because the story premise is really good. Do not get me wrong. The story premise was a lot of fun, but I just, eh, looking back on it, this isn't a show I really care to see. I know it's getting a season two, and apparently it's getting a fully English version, which is exciting, but still, I, I don't know. It doesn't have too much of an appeal to me. I I'm not too sure how I feel about it overall. I think it fits perfectly in the meh tier. Up next, we have a couple cartoons, a couple of the comedy sketches out there, but the first one being Family Guy. Now, this one is an absolute classic, but it's also going in the C tier for me. It's just, it's, it's good, but then it, it gets really bad, and it's not something I'm going to sit there and watch. Remember, this is my list. It's just my preference. These cartoon shows, even though I've seen them in full, even though I like them a lot, they're not like super quality. They fit a C tier perfect where I'm just going to put this on and enjoy it, not have a bad time, but not have like a great time either. Get a couple good laughs in, but it's not much better than that. Family Guy is funny, but there's other cartoon shows out there funnier like South Park, which I think fits better in the B tier because I think the raunchy humor in South Park is just much more fun, much more current, and even though it's it's a little it's a little childish, a little like too crazy sometimes, I really enjoy what we get here and the satire that we get from this show. I think is just stronger than Family Guy. They're both really good. I enjoy watching both of these, but South Park, I think ideologically speaks a little bit better. I think it's just more fun to watch. And now, right now, that's it for funny cartoons, but we do have a really funny show, and that's the Eric Andre Show. I love the Eric Andre Show. For quality standards, it's going in B tier, but it is one of my favorite just shows you could just throw on. I think this show is is so, so funny. The humor is different than anything out there. It really is, like, like the only way I could describe the Eric Andre show is like a bad acid trip. I don't know how else to describe it. It's just so funny. The horrible sets, the sweatiness of the characters, the gross things they do. It's just, it's just so goofy. It's so fun, and it's just amazing humor. It really is. Eric Andre himself has done such a good job with this show, and you Yes, it's not for anyone. Like, if I showed my dad this show, I think he would literally want to throw me out, like, and just, like, get rid of me. <laughs> but it really is. It's just so funny. It, it, it's just so fun. I enjoy every minute of this show. And even though now it's a lot more mainstream than it was in the first few seasons, I still think it's going strong. And for that reason, I think it's a good B-tier show. Obviously, it doesn't have, like, the cinematography. It doesn't have the right writing of other shows, but for me, this is my list. I think it's really funny, but 
taking a bit of a big turn here from crazy raunchy comedy, we have gory raunchy action drama, superhero, craziness, and that's The Boys. The Boys is an A tier for me. I really, really enjoy The Boys. It's just a fun story. And I gotta say, I think there's a couple things keeping it out of S tier for me. One of the big things is gore. Now, I've talked about gore on this channel quite a bit, especially in reference to The Last of Us and how I, how I think the show The Last of Us didn't quite utilize gore enough. Here, they utilized it way too much. And I'm looking at season three, episode one. Some of the things that take place in this show are just downright disgusting. Like, really, they're just gross. And honestly, the other thing keeping it out of S tier for me is I'm not too much of a fan of the Huey and Billy Butcher storyline in this show. I love, love the Homelander storyline. I think it is absolutely Incredible. It would go in S tier if that's pretty much where we focused mainly on Vought and Homelander's group overall. But Billy Butcher, to me, and that whole group, I, I don't really care for it. Mother's Milk, that, that whole dynamic, eh, it's just, it's boring to me. Every time we cut away to that side of the story, I'm not in love with it. And I know that might sound crazy because I know there's some Billy Butcher, Huey, Mama's Milk fans, or Mother's Milk, or whatever his name is. I know there's some big fans of those characters. I just don't care for them, but overall, because Homelander's in it and Anthony Starr was built to play this role, he was literally born for this role. Even with all of that said, I'm really looking forward to season four because Jeffrey Dean Morgan is in it. I saw pictures of them wrapping up production and I can't wait to see what they do. Overall, it really is just a fun, awesome show. A couple things are leaving it out of S tier for me. I don't think the quality in terms of like cinematography, even writing in some points, I don't think that's all there either. So there's no quite way it's going to get in my S tier, but I do enjoy it a lot. It's better than the comics and I'm really happy it exists. But up next, we have Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty is another cartoon comedy, but it's also a little bit more than a comedy. It's a sci-fi and I, I don't know how... You've definitely heard of Rick and Morty, obviously. There's no really, there's no reason to explain it. I do think it's a step above South Park and Family Guy. I think this is an A tier, at least cartoon. I enjoy what we get. The, co the conceptualization of the show, if that's even a word, it's just so good. The storytelling they do, the creativity they do, it's just amazing. Honestly, there was a lot of things that came out recently about Justin Roiland. And all of that aside, I wish they would just cancel the show because the thought of the show exists without him is really crazy to fathom and I know they can ha hire writers and all that stuff and I'm not defending Justin Roiland in any way but the idea of this show going on without its creator is kind of crazy especially when he voices Rick and Morty I, I don't know I'm not sure how much longer the show has because of that and it really is a shame that Justin Roiland had to do the things he did because there's it's insane but whatever um what we got so far has been awesome I really do enjoy Rick and Morty overall. I think it's just a fun show. The concept of it is good. The storylines they come up with and the creative sci-fi stuff is just awesome. But yeah. Okay. Now we finally have our first S tier on this list. And that is clearly, obviously, Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Always Sunny is the best arguably one of the best comedies, I should say. It is, there's a reason this show is going on its 16th season and still going strong. And yeah, some of the later seasons lacked in quality a little bit compared to some of the earlier seasons. But even then, those later seasons, like I'm looking at season 15, season 14, 13, 12, like all, everything past, in my opinion, season seven has kind of lacked a little bit, but I still think it's hilarious. You can see a little bit of a decline but not much, but that's my only complaint with the show. For the most part, everything about this show I think is great. The way it's shot is funny, the characters are incredible, the writing is smart, funny, witty, everything. The combination of Mac, Charlie, and Dennis, as well as Frank, of course, is just great, along with the fact that it's created by Glenn Howerton, Rob McElhenney, and Charlie Day. It's just so amazing. And then you watch things
things like the Always Sunny podcast, and it really just adds to the experience. Always Sunny is absolutely fantastic. If you haven't seen it, I do not know what you're doing. You're missing out on easily one of the best comedies of all time, and it's just so much more than that. There's so many memorable quotes from the show. There's so much to pull from this show, and it really is a good satire. The fact that it hasn't been canceled is incredible, but it avoids cancellation because it's never really biased. It's just showcasing a group of idiots, and that's awesome, and those idiots are doing nothing. And another group of idiots that are doing nothing is the same group in Seinfeld. Now, Seinfeld is the show that Always Sunny got a lot of its inspiration from. It's a very similar sitcom style. It's a show really, really about nothing but a group of people who are kind of idiots trying to like do all these schemes and things like that. You could tell the inspiration is pretty clear, but my personal preference is I think this is an A-tier show. It's not at all bad. It's very enjoyable, and over time, the show got a lot better. Even in the earlier seasons, it was fantastic. The combination of Larry David as well as Jerry Seinfeld as writers, they're just so great, but... Because of the time difference, because of my age, I personally find Always Sunny just ages better for me. The humor makes more sense for me and my demographic, whereas Seinfeld I feel like is a little outdated, which isn't a bad thing at all because the humor is still great. I just think this is more of a pure sitcom where this is just more of like a modern day comedy and I love the direction they went in. I don't even know if that made sense, but (laughs) overall, this one just doesn't resonate with me me as much as Always Sunny does. It's not a bad show at all. It's a great show. It just doesn't have the same effect Always Sunny does for me. But you know what does have the same effect that Always Sunny does? And it's made by the people from Seinfeld. Really, it's made by Larry David. It's Curb Your Enthusiasm. Curb Your Enthusiasm is an S tier for me. Straight up S tier. No doubt about it. Curb Your Enthusiasm is one of those shows where the entire time you're laughing. Like from start to finish, just belly laughing, cracking up practically on the floor. Whereas Always Sunny, I'll watch an episode, smile midway through, get a couple laughs here and there. This show, I'm laughing the entire time, and that's because the structure is just so great. I really do think there should be more shows like this. It is fully improvised. Yes, they have about a seven-page script that goes over the story of what's going to happen in the episode, so at least there's structure, but there is no dialogue. Zero. There is none of that. It is entirely made up by a cast of improv. It's so good. For people who like comedy, this is like the best show. I can't say much else other than this is just perfect for comedy. For people who are comedian fans, for people who, you know, do stand up and all of that stuff, this show is just on its game at all time. It is just something to be modeled in the future. There needs to be more shows with this much improv because it really has paid off. And yeah, now we have another comedy show. This is a very trendy one, just like Curb, just like Always Sunny and all of that stuff. We have The Office. And now I know some people that think this is like the best thing since sliced bread. I never really fully got the hype and I work in a corporate office. (laughs) I still don't get the full hype as much as some people do. I don't think it's a bad show at all. I think it's a perfect A-tier show, though. I It's fun. It follows a bit of a story, whereas Always Sunny and Curb don't. Like, they have a little bit of events that match up over the years as you're watching, but The Office follows a story from start to finish. It's loose, for sure, but it follows that. It's a little cheesy. It's a little more like your classic cable news show, like A Modern Family or things like that, but it's a lot funnier than your Modern Family or anything like that, and it resonates with anyone who's worked in an office, for sure. It just doesn't have the same effect as anything the S tier does. I do like the handheld camera style in this show. I like that it's shot like a reality show. I like a lot of those things. Michael Scott, played by a guy whose name is not ringing a bell, even though I know it so well, it'll come to me later. But Michael Scott, his actor is so Steve Carell. He is so fantastic. Everyone in it, Dwight Schrute's actor is fantastic in this. Jim Pam and um, that whole crew, they're all great. 
The acting in it is great. The cast is great. It just doesn't have the same effect as the others. I do think this show is overhyped a little bit too much, but I know some people probably down there are going to be holding me with pitchforks for saying that, but I do genuinely think it's not as good as some of the others. It's great. It's great. There's a reason it's an A tier, but it's not S tier quality. Now, Taking a break from some comedy shows, the next one up is a very, very, very old show, and that's The Twilight Zone. I love The Twilight Zone. I was really not sure where to place this, given its age and all of that stuff, but age doesn't matter. This show is timeless, and each episode is quality. Yes, there's some misses here, but for the most part, this is an S-tier show. Rod Serling and the crew who created this show just did such a phenomenal job. They really did. Each episode was so good. There's so many to think of, like Walking Distance, Time Enough at Last, To Serve Man. There, I could go on forever and ever. There are so so many classics in this show and they all follow really unique stories that even though some of it is political and you could hear a little bit of political bias in some of the episodes, for the most part, it's timeless. The episodes follow really amazing stories with incredible plot twists. It was the inspiration for a show like Black Mirror and I could see why this show has, you know, been as successful as it has. It's, you know, created reboots, created movies and all of that stuff. The Twilight Twilight Zone is just so good. Obviously, you can't replicate the original. Like, the movie was not nearly as good. The new version was not good at all. And even something like um, Black Mirror is not as good as The Twilight Zone. The Twilight Zone really is its something that stands on its own. It's fantastic. It's always resonated with me. And I owe a lot of all of this channel to The Twilight Zone because it was one of those shows that just got me into TV overall. I have nothing but the world to thank to the Twilight Zone. I love it so much. But yeah, anyway, up next we have The Walking Dead. And for this being a channel which a lot of its subscriber base is The Walking Dead based, I'm sorry guys, this is an A-tier show. It is not an S-tier show for me. It really isn't. It's very, very, very close. I'm going to put it at the tippity-tippity top of my S-tier, but it holds a similar fate to something like Game of Thrones, but not nearly as severe is Game of Thrones, except the decline is much stronger in The Walking Dead. So The Walking Dead from seasons one to season seven, episode one, were absolutely just fantastic. Easily, no questions asked, S tier show. Like, no questions asked. This and Game of Thrones, oops, this and Game of Thrones were absolute phenomenons. They were the two most popular shows. And I know there's people out there that are going to be looking at this and be like, Jerry, how could you put these in S tier? And I get it. But again, seasons one through seven, S tier. Seasons seven through 11 were kind of trash, like good, but kind of trash. Season nine was fantastic, but other than that, everything else really flatlined and some horrible decisions were made along the way, like the really poor use of Morgan, the, you know, I don't want to get into some of the big events, but the loss of some major characters and the poor handling of characters like Abraham, Carl, and even Michonne, Judith, you know, Daryl in some points, just the, the story got really goofy, and even though they were trying to follow the comics, which I think for the most part, they followed a lot of what they had, this show lost a lot. It lost a lot of the cast because some of the decisions made were really pretty goofy. I'm looking at the Carl situation as the biggest one. I'm trying so hard to avoid spoilers, but there is moments like that with The Walking Dead that totally ruined it for me. It really did. And season 11 kind of went out with a musty fart. It didn't really... Like, the ending was a good episode, but it wasn't like a great ending because you didn't have your core cast there. And even though you brought some of them back for the very end of the episode. It just kind of felt like a Marvel cutscene. So excluding that, I didn't really like the ending. I didn't really like much of anything past season seven, even though I loved in the comics 
everything that happened past season seven. I didn't think it worked really well on screen. Season seven and season eight were not told right. And just overall, yeah, it really is a shame because The Walking Dead in my heart has a very special place. It probably is in my heart the most fond show I have to me. I have the most personal connection to this. I owe this channel to The Walking Dead, really. Like, it really means more than any show on this list for me. I, I really click with it more than anything on this list, definitively. And for that reason, it should be at the top of my S tier. But realistically speaking, a lot of the things that happen in the writer's room really kept the show from being a pure S tier for me, looking back in retrospect. And even, I, it hurts me to say that. It really does. It hurts me to say that. But facts don't care about feelings. And factually, this show just lost a lot of its quality. And it really is a shame. But you know what never really had great quality to begin with? Outer Banks. It's a perfect D tier show. Now, the first two seasons of this show were kind of like so bad it's good, except they were a little bit more like so good instead of so bad. But I just overall, I mean, it got terrible. Season three is just not good. I tried to watch the first episode. I didn't like it. I tried to pick up some of the others. I didn't like them. And all the reviews I've seen are bad. And not that my mind is made up on reviews, but from what I saw, they stand out. This show just, ugh. all the stupid decisions really were amplified in season three. And seasons two and one were no saints to that either. I'm looking at a big moment that happened with Madeline Klein's character. I forget, Sarah. Um, a moment in season two that happened with her, which I don't think is going to get into too much spoiler territory because this isn't a crazy epic show, but Madeline Klein's character dies and then comes back to life from a wound that you would like never survive that way from. And not only that, she's just up and fine the next day, or even I should say that day with like no recovery, no issues, no problem. And it's just completely ignored like decisions like that. They just really keep the show from being any higher. It really is a shame because the premise is pretty cool here, but too bad. Now, the only one on this list that is kind of like a found footage or a documentary sort of vibe is The Beatles Get Back, and I'm obsessed with The Beatles, so this is really, you know, this is going to be a heavily opinionated on me one. This is an S-tier show. It is very, 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 very slow and boring if you're not a Beatles fan. This is only three episodes, so it barely counts as a show. It really is like a movie, just, I don't know what you would consider this, because even though it's technically a TV show. It's not a TV show. It's like a big documentary, but I'll put it in because it technically is TV. Whatever. Get Back is the raw footage from Let It Be and the creation of that album, and it really is outstanding standing to sit in the room and basically see what is like hitting camera footage of the Beatles in real life recording music and recording hits like Let It Be, Don't Let Me Down, um, some of the other big ones like The Long and Winding Road just in the flesh. Like one day Paul McCartney just walks into the studio and the hidden cameras pick it up and he's like, I had an idea in my sleep for this, this uh, song. Mother Mary came to me. Like it's insane that that's how it was created. That's that's how songs like Let It Be were created. And the I got to say, the AI that brought out the audio, that brought out the visuals in this were just so well and so well done by Peter Jackson. And just everything here, man, it's just so amazing. Yes, this is a slow burn, especially if you're not a Beatles fan. But if you're a huge Beatles fan like me, it's well worth it. And you could easily sit back and watch like the 10 hours that this is just with a big smile on your face. I felt like I was hanging out with the Beatles and I think the Beatles are the most magical band ever. So getting to do that was amazing. And then just overall the way it followed a story and it wasn't told like from a documentary point of view where there wasn't like some people sitting around like in the Bee Gees documentary, there's people like, then they did this. There was none of that. It was just all 10 hours of found footage. That's it. No one was explaining anything. There was nothing. It was just found footage of the Beatles and Peter Jackson cut it up to tell a story. It It's so good. It's incredible. If you're even the slightest Beatles fan, I recommend watching at least the first episode to just check it out and mind you it's three hours long but it's so good so good i can't stress it enough i love it and up next we have the wire big 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 difference from get back but the wire is 
obviously well known as like the most iconic show ever. It is known for having the best and most realistic writing on TV and all of that stuff. And it really just has an amazing story overall about Baltimore and the crime and corruption within it. But I don't think it fits S tier for me. It's an A tier. I think the show is great. It really is. It's just a little slow. It's kind of like reading a book, and I don't like reading books, so it's it's a bit more of a slow burn than what we get on TV nowadays. Maybe it's my attention span that's the problem, because on the page, this show is outstanding and easily deserves an S tier. It just doesn't resonate with me in the same way some of the shows that we're going to get into fit in S tier and all of that stuff, but overall, it's it's great. The story is amazing. Everything you get here with the Barksdale and all, you know, all of the police people and all that stuff, it's just so good. It really is. It's just slow. And I'll be honest, I never fully finished this. I've seen a lot of the clips of some of the things I haven't finished, but it was slow enough for me to miss out on some of the show because it's just, it, it, it really takes a while to enjoy it. But Again, it's like reading a book. You, you got to put a lot of work into this show. But if you're willing to do that, it is a masterpiece. I got to give it everything from cinematography, writing, acting, all of that. It should be an S tier. It's just down to personal preference at this point. I think it's an A tier. There's a lot of influence we could learn from this show, but yeah, whatever. Now, you know what is nothing like The Wire? Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Aqua Teen Hunger Force is funny as all hell, but it's also weird, crazy, and I... I don't even know why I have it on this list. I think it's just because I've seen this pretty much full through. I think it's a D tier show, but it's kind of on the so bad it's good level. It's, you know, it's a late night uh, adult swim show. That's what you get from these, but it's fun. I enjoyed it. All the people in it, like Frylock is just great. <laughs> there's so many good, there's so many good elements to it, but it's just, there's no quality. It's just a raunchy, crappy late night comedy, but it, it was fun. I remember watching this when I was, believe it or not, like really young, like 12 years old and younger, late night when I'd be up playing video games all night, I would have this show running somewhere, which was really, really good for my, <laughs> for my attention deficit, but whatever. Anyway, yeah, Aqua Teen Hunger Force, it's, it's a D tier show. It's funny, but yeah. Okay. Now we have our first F on the show. Da, 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 the world beyond. The world beyond is terrible. Absolutely awful. It is my least favorite show like ever. I've seen it. This one was hard to watch, but it's so freaking cheesy. I don't know what else to say about it, man. It's so cheesy. I just, oh God, I can't get past it. The kid's storyline with the cringe woke bullshit that this show was. God, I absolutely hated it. I don't know why this show was ever created and sure the Jada stuff was like kind of cool or whatever, but not really. It was honestly just bad overall. There's no redeeming quality to the show. The episodes were boring. Season two was, it was okay compared to season one, but the best we got is Jada's being like, I fought so hard for Rick. Like I brought Rick in. Look, look at that sacrifice. Like shut the fuck up, man. God, I hated this show. I just did. I hated it. It, it did not work for me at all. I don't know what Scott Pimple and his group of people were thinking. The show is just it's not good. It's not good at all. But the next one up on this list is Mythic Quest. Mythic Quest is made by Rob McElhenney, the same guy who makes Always Sunny, and it features some familiar faces, like the the guy's name I don't remember in real life, but Rickety Cricket is in this show, who's from Always Sunny. Um, but it follows a totally different premise. It's set on a gaming studio about a, an egomaniac and them creating a game that, you know, has a lot of chaos and development. It's the only Apple TV show on this list, and I think it's good, but I don't think it's anything special. I think it's a good C-tier show. It's meh. What really holds it back for me personally, which is a shame to say because I love Rob McElhenney and I love what he's done with Sonny, is I just feel like Mythic Quest, maybe it's from a production and higher up level down, I feel like this show leans a little bit too much on the woke stuff. It plays a little bit too safe and a little bit too PC, and if you know anything about me, I hate when shows do that. I don't think shows should shove a political ideology 
ideology down your throat. I think they're fine to reference real life things, but to shove an ideology down your throat, I'm not a fan of. And I feel like this show, while it's not all like that, and it's certainly not just like a propaganda piece or anything like that, I just feel like a lot of the time it aired on the side of wokeness, and I don't like that in my shows. I just don't. Point blank, period. But I do find it funny. I think the storyline is good overall. The episode structure feels a little too formulaic for me personally, and it feels a little too dry. Like, the characters I don't think are compelling on screen that much, but overall, I mean, I do enjoy it. This is a show I'll play in the background, uh, but not one that I'm fully going to engage myself with. I do enjoy it. It's nothing incredible, though. But you know what is incredible, and you know what is my favorite show of all time? Better Call Saul, top of my ass tier. Duh. Does that even need explaining, man? I already made a video all about this where I personally think Better Call Saul is the best show of all time, even better than Breaking Bad. So I'm going to leave that video linked up here. I'm not going to get into it here. All you need to know is I think the show is a masterpiece. It nails everything absolutely everything. The character development, the characters alone, the acting, the cinematography, fuck it, the color grading, the direction, the writing, Vince Gilligan, his hair, like, no, <laughs> that, that last part's crazy, but I'm dead serious. Every single thing about the show is a masterpiece. There is no flaw in my opinion in this show. Sure, some people argue that season one is a little show and some, uh, a little slow, not show, <laughs> is a little slow, and some people aren't a fan of some of the black and white stuff that happens. I'm not in love with the black and white stuff, but I liked it, and I think they told a really good story with it overall. I can't think of one real complaint on my end for this show, and that's what it's all about, right? This is a list of my favorites. Better Call Saul is perfect. I really do think it's a perfect show. I love how it went out. I love that Vince Gilligan, Peter Gould, and that whole crew are like, you know what? We're done. We're not making all these crazy spinoffs. This is it. I, I like that. I appreciate it. This show is like a fine, fine wine. It's beautiful. It gets better with age. It gets better when you pair it with Breaking Bad, which we're going to get into later. But even though I think, and this is a spoiler, I think Breaking Bad is pretty much just as good. Um, I, I, I just think Better Call Saul is overall better. Point blank, period. We're going to get into that in a little bit, but yeah. That's all you need to know. Better Call Saul is my favorite show of all time. It's, uh, it's incredible, and if you haven't seen it, stop what you're doing right now and go watch it. But up next, we have... House of the Dragon. House of the Dragon surprised me a lot because I was not excited for this at all because I thought the ending of Game of Thrones was so bad that it was just, it was done for the franchise. I really did. I had no interest in anything that they were going to make. And then I finally got around to watching House of the Dragon. And to me, so far, it sits right next to Game of Thrones. <laughs> if anything, this show has reignited my interest in Game of Thrones and got me to rewatch Game of Thrones, which also led me to think, eh, was season eight that bad or was I over exaggerating? The honest answer is it was that bad. But the fact that this show made me question a lot is saying something. It's fantastic. The story with Rhaenyra, Damon, Viserys, even though he died, which I shouldn't be saying, sorry if I spoiled that for anyone, whatever. But just like the characters in this and the shorter or the smaller condensed story is just marvelous. It really is just so incredible. I'm enjoying this, and yes, it's only in season one, but what we have here is a fully fleshed out story from Dance of the Dragon, which is fully done by George R. R. Martin, and that's where they're going to be taking this. This was based off of Fire and Blood, which is a smaller piece, but you could tell they were going from Fire and Blood into Dance of the Dragon with this show, and the direction that this takes is just incredible. I can't wait to see some major events from Dance of Dragons play out in this show. I'm just so excited. House of the Dragon at least has a start to finish that we can see in sight. I'm very excited for what they're going to bring, and I cannot wait for season two. I loved season one. I thought it was so good. But yeah, now we're on a bit of a list of HBO shows, and you can see them we're on some uh, Nickelodeon shows. But up next, we have The Last of Us. The Last of Us is, you know, it's not as good as an S-tier 
but I loved it. Personally, I think it's a great A tier. Now, no, this show does have a couple things that I'm not too fond of, which is why it's not in S tier, such as the fact that I think the pacing was a little too fast, especially compared to a game where you spend so much time with these characters going through the levels and stuff like that. And as I'm doing my playthrough of The Last of Us right now, I'm really starting to realize how rushed this season was overall. But what we got was fantastic, man. The production in this show was so good. The set pieces were incredible. The acting by Pedro Pascal and Bella Ramsey was top notch. The additions and the changes with Bill and Frank were so good. The, um, the Henry and Sam storyline was fantastic. Just everything overall here, I really did love. I, I loved it. It was so good. It's just, I think the pacing really was a, was a, unfortunate thing for me this show needed like one more episode in season one to develop a little bit but overall i did really enjoy this i think it needed a little bit more violence a little bit more clickers and it needed like one more episode if it had those things i'd say s tier but it's almost there i love the story of the last of us from the game i can't wait to see what happens in season two i made a video all about that if you want to check it out i'm going to put that here as well but my god God, I love The Last of Us. It's just a couple things held me held it back from me from being in the S tier. Now, for now, the last of the HBO shows, I mean, there is one more, which I'm saving for later, but the last of them for now is Euphoria. Now, Euphoria has a pretty interesting premise, but overall, I think it's just a B tier show. It's good. I love the music in this show. I love the cinematography. I love the acting, especially by Zendaya in this show and Sydney Sweeney and some of the others. Um, I, I I love a lot of what we get here. I just think the storyline overall is a little repetitive, a little just cliched of a story. And here it's 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 a little unsettling in my opinion. Um, I'm a you know I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm a guy, um, a heterosexual. So some of the stuff with you know the women stuff and all that stuff that should be exciting and all that stuff to me. But I'm gonna be honest here. The idea of it being there's so much nudity and sex and a show with all the of that based around high school students that we're supposed to be following. It's just, it's, it's like unsettling to me. It really is. Makes me feel uncomfortable. So eh, I don't know. That keeps it down for me. The fact that it's just very cliched overall keeps it down for me. Some of the decisions they made in the show, especially in season one, it was a little dry and I feel like there's not much of a story left to tell. I mean, we're going to be heading towards college soon with these kids. It's just, eh, I don't know. It's good, but it's not amazing. It's just kind of there. Some of the storylines with Rue and some of the stuff she gets into is just eh. Um, but overall, I, I really like a lot of what we've gotten in this show. There's some there's some really good moments. There's some really great sequences. Um, but again, the over sexualization of high schoolers, even though even though like Sydney Sweeney's and Daya and all of those people, they're all of course older in real life. But the idea that we're supposed to be seeing some very very graphic nude moments with high schoolers is just odd. I uh, I don't know. It, it doesn't sit right for me. But yeah, that's Euphoria. I probably got way too opinionated on that one, but whatever. Okay, so yeah, we're going to come back to an HBO show in a little bit, but the next one up, we have SpongeBob SquarePants. And SpongeBob is... Okay, I wrote this as an A tier, but realistically, as far as children's shows and comedies and all of that, it's an S tier for me. It really is. SpongeBob is just so good. It's not just for kids. It's for adults. Even the later seasons, even though clearly they've diminished in quality, they're still good. It's fun to watch. It's funny. SpongeBob and Patrick are hilarious. And even though they got more childish over the years and all of that stuff, the premise is just so fun. Being with pineapples under the sea, being with sponges, squirrels, starfish, and squids and all of that stuff. It's just so fun. There's so many fun premises of this show and just the earlier seasons really are so fun. They hold such a special place in my heart. Yes, this is a kid's show on the list and it's a perfect S tier for me. I love SpongeBob. It will go down as one of my favorites of all time. There's so many uh, great quotes like, uh, you mean like a weenie? <laughs> There's so much, man. I don't know why I'm quoting Patrick, but whatever. I'm getting delirious. I've been recording for 43 minutes, okay? Whatever. 
Next up, we have Jimmy Neutron. This one's a C tier for me. It's good. Some of the stuff you get is is pretty funny. Uh, Miss Fowl. Mrs. Fowl! <laughs> Okay, I, this, I'm getting delirious, but then this foul is funny. Shane's funny in this show, or Sheen, Shane, whatever. Carl, they're all funny, but like, I don't know. The premise overall, just kind of goofy. The graphics made me feel very uncomfortable, if I'm being completely honest. Um, it's it's just a C tier. I felt that way about it, about it when I was a kid. It was good. I would watch it, but it wasn't like anything special. Uh, Fairly Odd Parents is a very similar story to me. The voices in it, like Cosmo and Wanda, really annoyed me growing up even Timmy's voice annoyed me but I loved <laughs> some of the stuff with like the curse you Dinkelberg <laughs> there were some like funny moments with things like that and stuff but I don't remember any of the episodes really here it's been so long since I've seen it but I always remember this one being just a eh, nothing special sort of show now I have Drake and Josh further down on the list I'm going to move it up because we're already talking about Nickelodeon shows but we have Drake and Josh up next and I think Drake Drake and Josh is a perfect A tier show. I really do. I love the dynamics between Drake Bell and Josh Peck. I think it's just so fun. They were great as child actors, and even though apparently they have real life drama and they weren't even that close or whatever, which is heartbreaking, on screen it just works so well between the two of them. The episodes were so good. Even Megan, she was just so good in this show. Just everyone. It really hit on all cylinders. It was a wholesome, just wonderful show growing up. I have so many fond memories of watching this. Just, oh man, I, I loved it. I really did. I loved Drake and Josh. It's definitely one of the best Nickelodeon shows of all time. Now, going down the route of a cartoon that isn't a kid show, we <laughs> definitely not a kid show. We have Invincible. Invincible is a B tier show for me. This is made by Robert Kirkman, who made the Walking Dead comics, and I think Scott Gimple also works on this as well. But what I really like from this show is it's not quite exactly one for one, but it's almost a one for one adaptation of the comics, and it's done in cartoon form, which is great because in cartoon form, we, there's no real budget on what you could draw. You know what I mean? So you could do some really epic stuff. The show gets ultra gory, and it's great because it's a cartoon, so it doesn't really matter. It's voiced by some amazing people, such as Stephen Yoon, who played um, Glenn in The Walking Dead. There's just so much to love about it. I love that it's well adapted from the comics, and I really, really wish The Walking Dead would make a one-for-one -one cartoon animation based off of the comics. I truly do. Now, coming down towards the end of the list, we have Breaking Bad, and I already kind of talked about this. It's an obvious. Breaking Bad is S tier for me, and it's pretty much at the tippity top of my S tier. I think it's so fantastic, and yeah, I don't think it's as good as Better Call Saul, but that margin is, like, so close. It's almost a hairline off. It really is, like, just as good. I just think Better Call Saul's a little, little bit better, but my God, Breaking Bad is just so good. It's it's really one of the biggest reasons that I do this channel. <laughs> I love Breaking Bad. I need to start making videos on Breaking Bad. Now that I think about it, I've never really made a video just on Breaking Bad alone, but it's so good. <laughs> Seasons one and two were a little slow in my opinion, kind of like how season one of Better Call Saul was slow, but this, it felt a little slower. It took a little bit more time to establish uh, the, the show overall, especially like everything we get with the characters, but after after we established and we finally got to see Vince Gilligan and crew get comfortable with these characters, this show was just perfect. It really was. It was perfect. Everything. Down to the last, minute Homelanders. Seriously, it was so good. I love it. What more can I say? Again, if you want to see my video breaking down uh, the comparison of these two shows, which I think is better, that one goes in depth about how I really feel, so I'm going to save that for there. All you need to know right now is it's a perfect S tier for me. Now, up next, we have Nathan For You. Nathan For You is a about a B tier. I think it's really funny. I enjoyed a lot of it. I think it sits in a similar category with the Eric Andre show. It's witty, crazy humor, and it's funny because it's making fun of shows like Bar Rescue and things like that and I like that as a premise but some of the episodes just weren't that funny but the ones that hit hit Nathan for you is great now up next we have Dahmer Monster Dama Monster um, I think this was B tier the depiction of Jeffrey Dahmer in this was 
terrifying and felt very realistic. The actor who played him did an outstanding job, and I liked the story that this told. I felt like it was just a good watch. It was very unsettling, but a good watch overall. I enjoyed it. It wasn't anything better. It wasn't anything worse. It was good, though. It was a good show. Now, I saved two interesting ones for last. I am in Season 3, Episode 7 of Succession right now, so I'm almost caught up. <laughs> Not quite. I mean, I have another full season to get through, but I'm almost up to the current season that's on air, and man, S tier. S tier. This show is so good. It's, ah, oh God. This resonates with me because I love business dramas, and I feel like this is the perfect blend of comedy and business drama, and it really is great. It's also produced by Adam McKay and Will Farrell, which I think really helps. Adam McKay made Step Brothers, if I'm not mistaken, and he's done other comedy projects and things like that. He also was a, um, worked on The Big Short, which you could tell The Big Short pulls a little bit from here and stuff like that. The, the director direction, the cinematography, the use of the handheld camera is very similar. And you even have, I don't know his actor's name, but the guy who plays Kendall Roy, he was in the big short, whatever. But the story is just so good between Logan, Shiv, Roman, Kendall, all of them. The dynamic is so freaking good. I I can't get enough of this show. I've been watching this show like it's no tomorrow. I, I, I'm interested to see how this holds up in retrospect, and I can't wait to see what happens in season four, which is the final season. Um, but man, I just, oh, I love this show so far. I can't wait to see what they do, but it's off to an incredible start for me, or should I say run, because it's past the start now. But yeah. Okay. Now, there's Fear the Walking Dead, and I saved the best for last, not because it's an S-tier show, but because it's a D-tier show. And I really, really wanted to put this in the F-tier, but I couldn't, because I gotta say, when this show hits, it hits. Seasons 1 through 3 were really good seasons, but everything past that, it's, it's like The Walking Dead where seasons one through seven of The Walking Dead were great and then everything past that was meh. But here, seasons one through three were great and then everything past that was just dog shit. Season six was good, but when you mix it in the loop with everything else, it's not good, man. This show just has no direction. The fact that Ian and Andrew, the showrunners for this, have a job still, I, it just blows my mind. I really do think you could hire a chimpanzee, pay him nothing, and he will come up with a better story than the writers did for this show. It lost all of its direction. It has a serious identity crisis. The writing feels like... I, I, I don't even know where it's based in. It just feels so unrealistic. And it's just... Ah, oh man. God. It really is a shame because this show had so much potential. If Nick stayed in the show and Madison wasn't killed off so early on in the show and then came back and all that crap, but if, if those events didn't happen, this show probably would have went a totally different direction. I think, and I want to believe in my heart, if Nick didn't leave and if Madison didn't leave... I think this show could have been the origin story to The Whisperers. I wish it was that, because I think that would have been awesome. But no, uh, what we got was Mega Doodoo, seasons one through three. Again, they were great. I loved it. The premise they were going with with the Clark family was great. But then Nick left. Then they decided to take out Madison, and it just it lost all of its identity. Then we brought in Morgan, who was my favorite character from The Walking Dead. But here, his identity just felt so out of place. They felt like It felt like they ruined the character for me with the stale writing and the weird, like, poetic crazy right things that no one would say on planet Earth. And just overall, I just, ugh, it's a D tier and it's a shame. I wanted to put it at F, but I also wanted to put it at, like, A if the potential was there, but it's wasted potential. But yeah, I am so done talking, but that's my list. <laughs> okay, so thank you so much. I want to know what you feel about this list. I'm going to leave the link for this tier maker down in the description, so go check that out. Oh my god, I'm I'm tired of talking. <laughs> okay, so that's the list. Clearly, I'm very tired of talking. That was a straight hour of recording, but yeah, I want to know what you guys have to say about that down in the comments. I know The Walking Dead's pick was definitely going to be controversial and all of that stuff, but it's how I feel. This is my opinion. And if you're watching this right now, what are you doing? Jesus, you watched a whole hour of this video, or did you skip to the very end, huh? I don't know. You tell me. Whatever. Anyway, I'm tired. So that's the list. Maybe I'll do another one of these when I have a lot more shows that I've seen. Um, 
But yeah, again, thank you so much for watching this video. If you made it all, to, all the way to the end, you deserve a cookie. I don't have one for you. But again, thank you so much, so much for watching. And until the next one, I'll talk to you later. Peace out. Oh, and by the way, before I actually do the peace out, I am in a different area. This isn't permanent. I don't have all of my stuff here. I don't have my camera. I have a Yeti mic here. Hi. Um, but I don't have everything that I typically use for recording. This is going to be how it is in the summer months, um, but not for every video because I'm kind of in two different areas throughout the summer. So whatever. Some of the videos are going to have this kind of quality, but whatever. Deal with it. Okay. Thank you again so much for watching this video. Thanks for the third time. Thanks a fourth time, a fifth time, because I don't know what else to say. And with all of that out of the way, I'll talk to you later. Peace out.